almost with all people who is here. Uh, we had the chance to meet uh, during this week. So we are very happy that you still are here. <laughs> so um, yeah, through this uh, summer time and maybe in another in another part of the world, it's a little bit different. Uh, I am also in Spain. It's very warm and and very so um, very also busy time. But we are just uh, in the last days also of this activity. I think that uh, uh, we had a very uh, good conversations and uh, exchange. So I am not sure if uh, we will again present what Fab, Fab Academy is. Uh, Fab Academy, sorry, Fab Care. Um, so, but uh, this session is actually um, think uh, about a, a exchange of the experience uh, from all of you. So uh, that's uh, a working group that we start to do, as I said, last uh, years. Uh, during the FAV conferences. So um, our main goal uh, is to um, uh, use this time to take advantage of, of this time and exchange these experiences. I think that there are many people that has very precious projects. Uh, we heard in small groups, but I think that that's the opportunity that we can exchange these experiences. So we have, um, as I said, we have a, a small also a presentation and also a mural in which we want to do as a warm-up session. Um, maybe, uh, so I will give the voice also to Enrico, maybe if you want to add something in the meanwhile. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to use the time today. We have another person. To, to, to start to actually uh, collect content and understand what could be useful uh, to have in the page, what, what's, what's for. So one of the content we will add soon uh, in the top care page on the directory is uh, basically the synthesis of the workshop, the, of the workshop we did together, uh, Nada, with, with the questions and and some of the answers to those questions uh, in a structure of a form, so the conversation can go on if people want to discuss more about it. Um, at the moment, we have four materials that I'm happy to uh, show you. So, um, at the moment, uh, what we uploaded here is a brief description of what we mean by Carables. There's also a link to a platform where you can uh, download uh, more or less 100 projects. Um, well, I, I can go through this quickly so we have an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, the, platform is this, we briefly spoke about it. Uh, at the moment, we have a collection of uh, COVID-19 projects, but also other projects. So this is a hack for a kid for a toilet seat. Um, this is to help people to count, uh, uh, even if they have a dyscalculia to associate movements to numbers. There are a lot of projects, uh, super nice projects to help uh, um, uh, seems stress, seems stresses, I think it's the name in English, to use this kind of machine even without the capability of moving their feet, so she's pushing uh, with the elbow. And all these projects has uh, some kind of documentation. We are doing our best to push people to document, but it's not always easy. It's really something people don't want to do. <laughs> So um, some of these projects are things done uh, within uh, our lab uh, or within our other Fab Labs partner. Some of the projects are, are better documented because they were uh, 
done together within a, a university course that I'm running. So in this case, documentation is a bit more complete and you have the Arduino code and all the information here. In other cases, the documentation uh, might refer to an existing project on another platform because we don't want to force people to use this platform if they prefer to have it on their own website. So uh, let's say worst case scenario uh, at the end of the documentation, this is a very long one. Um, okay, this is already a very complete one, but in some cases you just have the link to the original web page, so it refers to an external documentation. The nice thing about this is that, uh, let me see, Login. Uh, let's login. Uh, let's uh, I, I, <laughs> I recently resetted the password, so I, all the passwords are wrong. Uh, I, I can't show you this right now. But if you uh, subscribe to the platform from uh, here, the main website, when you go in uh, Discover Carables and you go in Upload Your Carables, it redirects you on Welder. And if you are logged in, and I'm not at the moment, uh, it gives you a template to document your project, and that simplifies a bit things. So the template guides you through questions. Uh, it could be useful to, you know, um, because nobody likes to do document what they do, at least let's, let's make their life easier. So this is basically what you find in the first material. Uh, that we uploaded on uh, Wikifactory. The second material was the descriptions of the challenge we had, and we we might uh, we should add here maybe uh, the winners. What do you think, Diana? Link at least to the winners. It would be nice. This was the challenge we started this year. Um, then in, in, in the lab, I'm managing, uh, we designed the, um, we designed a co-design co material. So here you can find the uh, templates to do co-design with people. Uh, you just bring them and they are open source, of course. So there are six different steps. Uh, one in particular could be useful. And it's this. Um, when you speak with people that are not familiar with technology, we realize that it's good to give them uh, uh, references on, on technology. So we made cards that you can print uh, on a big, big on uh, you know, cardboard. And in this case, uh, you have a descriptions of what, uh, of, of different technologies. So uh, what can you use to heat up stuff or to move stuff? Uh, lights that you can use, uh, kind of screens. Uh, um, and then of course, you get the machines that are have a different colors. So the technologies that have a different color. Uh, and sensors that have a different color again. So uh, printing this card, we notice that it makes the process easier to discuss about technology because you have something in front of you that remembers that a sensor that measure motion can understand uh, your presence uh, if you are in uh, a place or you get out of a place, if you rotate it and if you accelerate it. So it's, it's easy to keep things in mind, you know? It's not super complete, of course, but it's a good starting point. If you are talking to people with it that has no experience, it's good. So the idea was to keep them all from the top. Um, 
and uh, select the things that you think it could be useful and then flip them to see the details on the back. Again, uh, this is released in open source. So if you want to use it and try it out, we're very happy about it. Another uh, material, another story, another content that we had was uh, how to hack your 3D printer to print faster, to produce uh, face shields. So that's the entire process from uh, um, drilling uh, the extruder, the, the nozzle, to make it uh, bigger, to set up some uh, uh, custom-made uh, pieces of G-code that uh, allows the machine to kick. Hello, everyone. My name is Anton. So you, you have a video tutorial here an explanation on how to set up a spiral to print faster. Uh, but also in the end, yeah, here, we did this a bit, a bit in a hurry to be honest. Um, so there is the entire process and in the end, uh, the G code kicks the piece out of the printing bag. So you can print one piece after the other without uh, have to reset the machine. So there is a, a small piece of G-code we explained how to integrate it where this was another example of the content. So these are just general ideas, of course, but we would love to hear from you, uh, you know, if you feel like uh, other contents, other material could be useful for you, um, please let us know. Um, I just want to to um, to compliment a little bit. Uh, I think that that is, as I said, uh, that was a very very productive week and full of ideas. And I think that uh, it might be nice also to show the others uh, what we, what we, um, the topics also that what we talk uh, during this week. So um, uh, maybe for for the ones that we were not uh, here, also I am working in Germany. We have also very uh, several regional also activities in which. I think that it's also very nice to share as, for example, um, projects uh, as, for example, Vicopedics that we are working also with a, a physiotherapist in order to understand a uh, process of uh, how to implement uh, digital fabrication also in, in, uh, in uh, scenarios in which they are working very manually for, for several techniques. and. Uh, so, for example, I, I like a lot that uh, in in comparison of big projects, all of these tiny projects are also very useful, also for sharing the community. Uh, so, uh, but uh, also as I, as I said, uh, what I wanted also to to share uh, the computer um, is uh, the. Um, I am just trying because the computer is asking me just to share one. Uh, I, I hope that it works. Uh, so some of the outputs that we have during this uh, time, for example, yesterday, we have also the Fab Care Manifesto in which we try to understand also uh, and work together, understanding, for example, issue um, how we could generate a charter and a manifesto in which we can all people orient through uh, um, yeah, uh, healthcare and maybe as, as we receive also comments that it is not only for, for, for people, also for non-human base, uh, but uh, some, some, some parameters that we can also orient ourselves and understand how we could better cooperate and work together. Um, so we have also uh, the workshop of making for humanity, how to tackle social needs in your lab, in which we work also in different aspects 
for example, understanding uh, troubles also of accessible uh, accessibility for different groups and the different routes, tackles, and making it sustainable. And uh, so we had another session uh, of what next, uh, thinking about the future of, for example, the yeah, fab care and uh, through the COVID, how affect, for example, this processing in general in fab um, in fab labs area. So for the group today, uh, as uh, we have just uh, this mural, I that was uh, some of the ideas that we have. Uh, we want to start also with the stories heard about you, uh, and uh, as I said, so that we have this. Uh, I said a little warm-up session uh, and the idea is to to uh, see where are you the ecosystems maybe you can also put your your note uh, where are you located in the map and also make uh, put your your location and and uh, if you are telling a little bit about your projects we can also understand and take uh, some notes in which we can also complement here in this uh, mural. Um, as an example of it, for example, last year we, with Enrico, we were talking about how could be nice to understand and cooperate and make a challenge about uh, healthcare. And this is something that, uh, um, that actually materialized, let's say, or it makes real through the, um, through, of course, the topic of COVID. Um, we, uh, okay, 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 sorry. So we had the chance to to work with the Fab Fab Foundation, and we uh, with the Dassault systems to understand this re, um, how community can work together and contribute. Uh, um, yeah, for a special need that in this time is uh, um, how to um, mitigate the pandemic. And I think that some of the projects, as for example, the, the, the three winners that we have, the Innovate Design Solution, for example, the Fab Lab Uruguay that works also with a, with a solution for testing uh, in COVID. Uh, that was very interesting projects in which they can they work to, together. They design a product that after, after validated, and they could use directly in patients. Uh, the third uh, solution, the second solution, that it was about the new normal. That it was like a little bit uh, in another way. That it was the digital, the DGYC, That it was a platform for education made in Fab Lab Lima. And the third prize about the, the uh, collaboration and community effort from from Fab Lab Cuenca. So I just just wanted to mention some of the ideas that came from last year and and that we see that working yeah together maybe we can also get uh, uh, contribute all all of us uh, together and and have um, yeah and grow grow as a community. I will just put the link here. Um, yes, so. Uh, well, yeah, so let's, uh, in the meaning while that, uh, that all of us are just locating their points and maybe for people who doesn't know uh, Mural, we have in the link part, uh, um, possibility if you make like uh, two clicks to add like post-its, just put your post-it where you are uh, with double click or Otherwise, also you have also icons in which you can also add your icon or your point uh, and identifying which lab are you belonging or in which initiative are you working. 
So uh, in the meanwhile, maybe uh, I know that here there are very a lot of people that are working in in initiatives of, around um, um, healthcare. Maybe uh, some of you want to start. I don't know, like for example, Christina or Kumar or Jeffrey. Or maybe the initiative from Tom. Yeah, I think um, that pleasure. That with, would be great. Yeah, with, with pleasure. Um, so, um, Basically, uh, what Carables is doing and Fabcare uh, is doing and, and what Tom is doing is very much uh, parallel in, in the sense of uh, the focus of work. Um, I think that we, at least uh, on, on terms of, uh, in terms of uh, aim, um, we, we strive to aim for um, also to create solutions also for outside of the healthcare specifically. Uh, I think that through um, edited technology fabrication, we can create solutions for so many problems that humankind is facing. Um, so, um, but obviously the, the most um, clear and, and, and mostly because it's so much visible, disabilities, older persons um, and work environments are kind of the, the, the most clear uh, for, for us to see and then create solutions around. Um, and we also have developed uh, a platform, uh, basically, that um, through the Tom communities around the world, um, and our platform, the same way that it um, works with uh, how Carable works, uh, is that um, communities, basically, ours is community-based, so each community um, creates their own solutions. Everything is uploaded uh, as open source to, their, uh, to the web platform and is accessible to anyone everywhere uh, for free. Uh, so if I can, uh, I'll put, I don't know if I can, can I share screen or, yeah? yeah. Is that function? Sure. Uh, yeah, let me, let me make you co-host. I guess that now you can share screen. Perfect. Uh, and, I, and I apologize in advance that I have to, present and, 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 and run. I have to pick up my son from daycare. It's his second day after uh, five months of staying at home with us. So uh, it's only half days uh, um, in the meantime. So just a second, let's see that. Perfect. Um, so this is, this is our platform, um, which basically has several components to it. One is the community. So Tom communities around the world. Um, have their own uh, pages uh, and each community uh, creates, um, does activities throughout the year, once a year, twice a year, three times a year, every community depending on their bandwidth and, and, and ability. Um, and each community basically um, creates solutions very much similar to what you've seen on the Carables. So if some of it is 3D printing, so for instance, uh, Iron Women woman who created a prosthesis so she can she's a triathlete uh laura and she's amazing uh but she needed an apparatus that will help her um cycle better so to attach the stump into the bike uh once she comes out of the water she needs to she needs to start uh cycling um or if we take a, an example another example is is um, the violin, which is super exciting. This is a, a prosthesis, a 3D printed prosthesis, super simple, 60 bucks. Um, and the files are here to download. Uh, very much similar. Uh, and I, Enrico, what you've said at the beginning about documentation, uh, that's really hitting the nail on the spot. It's like getting people to document their work. People want to make, but they don't know when to document their work, uh, which is super unfortunate. But we have um, some experience, some, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say best practices. There's always better practices, but uh, good practices that we've, we've encountered is actually um, trying to find volunteers outside of the making realm uh, to join in on these activities and actually asking them to document, uh, whether it be students and your experience in university is amazing. And that's where we actually took it. So 
going into faculties that are not engineering, that are not design, that are really people that write uh, and not just and not make uh, is is a great uh, is a great way to to really get wonderful documentation going. Um, high school students that's also obviously with the right tools and 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 chaperoning high school students have also proven themselves to be super uh in documenting projects they're so excited about um, um really how to uh document and i think one of the most important things is like you've mentioned Enrico, is really to provide a template uh and an easy template to work with um with a with a very very easy step-by-step -step guide um and that is really uh something that plays and goes you know uh very far in in people's minds on how to document those files because eventually if there's no documentation it's a one-off and and i think the the whole idea of really scaling these solutions because um uh, most of these needs are uh, these unmet needs exist everywhere so it's a, it's a problem in in israel it's a problem in in new york it's a problem in germany it's a problem in uh, Rwanda. It doesn't matter where you're from. These most of these challenges exist everywhere, um, and I think that through proper documentation, and then I think uh, something that we haven't had, um, you know, we're working uh, furiously to, to to achieve is really how to connect the final piece. Is how to connect the makerspace, uh, not through an activity, but directly. I think that will be a real game changer on how someone with a disability or someone with a need finds that solution and is able to connect to the maker uh, to create. Because the webs, these platforms are not just for makers, right? These platforms are for everyone, those with need and those with the talent to create those solutions at the same time. And um, we, we like to make, and, and this is like something that's burning within us. We wanna make, make, make but and then provide the prototype to that individual um but i want like i when i say want i i mean tom we want that um we want the individual to be able to not need me to create a solution but to be able to find the solution and then create it directly through a makerspace whether it be in a university a pub public library a commercial makerspace um, and I think that's really where the, the challenge uh, lies uh, ahead. Um, and, and again, I, I'm, I'm super thankful for having the opportunity to, to say a few words and really to thank you for leading the work of Fabcare, um, and which is, I've gotten to know it recently and I'm really, really excited to get to know it even better uh, along the way and see how we can really collaborate wonderfully. So I apologize again and I have to run off um so thank you everyone uh and uh i'm actually running in a tropical storm which is now happening in in new york so it's going to be interesting uh so <laughs> thank you so much bye bye thank you <laughs> thank you so much so uh yeah i think that that's so very um, very interesting uh projects and i think that uh, I, most of us uh, are facing also uh, the challenges um i would like to invite a uh, um the next one who wants to uh share a little bit uh, your experience uh, also if you have a website or something that you want to share Okay. Hi, uh, I am Sridhar. Actually, I am a high school student. <laughs> Actually, I, I have participated in the uh, social distancing challenge and I have made my prototype like it's, it's like just like a web shooter. Have you seen Spider-Man, right? He used to shoot from the web shooter from his hand. So the, my idea is like to uh, keep a sanitizer bottle over here and whenever, uh, whenever we are going to touch something, we can spray from the spider shot something like the device right so that's what my idea like i have made a prototype also like uh, could i show that yeah yeah so uh, 
actually uh, uh, my idea is uh, it's it's a bit different thing uh, uh, and uh, like initially i'll show you my my idea how it works and uh, okay uh, everything i did it my home so it looks messy over here uh, yeah, you could see right my arduino board and actually this is the thing which i'll place in my hand like this and uh, this is the sanitizer bottle like i have uh, it is a water filled sanitizer bottle right now i have filled with sanitizer a bit and uh, right now like i'll keep in my hand and it, it's a, just a prototype like i have i have thought in my mind and till i have to improve it my project and uh, like uh, there will be a capacitive touch sensor over here in, inside my uh, in the inside my fist so when i touch it it automatically sprays so, like uh, wait i the instead of capacitive touch over here i have placed a button so oh okay <laughs> wait a minute like this is a trouble over here right now <laughs> Ah, okay. It's it's back on the track. Okay, so uh, I'll place it on my arm like this, and when I press it, like it used to spray. So whenever go when I whenever I touch an object, I can just spray it my from my fist, and I can take that object. And uh, it's it can be like uh, like you can touch whatever you want due to the COVID disease, and like it can be anywhere. So you can be sanitizing any objects, and you can take it. and you can have a drink or you can touch the things so you are free from touching right it's like uh yeah you can touch anything right there's no point of where you can uh blocking the social distance that's my idea and right now like i am in a fab lab bangalore which is in india and i am doing my fab academy right now i haven't finished my fab academy course and uh, uh, so far i, I did everything this home everything in my home and that's it Pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's it's very nice. The idea of the sensors, uh, <laughs> and it's it's a bit magical the electronics. I mean, but can we? That makes totally sense. Yeah. Any suggestion? Like a, a, yeah, yeah. Try to think about uh, um, purely mechanical version as well. I mean, yeah. the movement you have to do to spray things is is not that big. So maybe just pulling or or pushing should be enough to actually do that. At that point, the object becomes very small. Small, yeah, yeah. That's what like uh, together with you whenever you go. Yeah, actually, my idea is like to make like a Spiderman shooter, which is this this much size. And if I have a three D printer and if I have some machines in my lab, so I can go to my lab and I can do my designs over there, right? Right now it's my home. I can have only a laptop. I I have a CAD design also, but not in this laptop. I have in my desktop, which is which is another system, uh, which I can show to you also. That's like uh, just a model. And I have been discussing with my friends also, and I am trying to improve with this model further more. He told like we can we can have like uh, uh, the pipes. We can uh, like a bangle thing. We can spin the pipe and we can fill it because the pipe used to. uh take the uh, uh scientific liquid the volume will be more so it, when you press it, it will be mechanically be will be easier they have suggested some of the techniques but i am still uh, working on this uh for my final project also and it's uh, like i i am been waiting for so many suggestions like uh, i know about electronics parts but uh, mechanical design mechanical construction and the mechanical works like i have to learn about that so i think the community would help me in doing my project like little more further further up building the project a little bit further with uh, like this is the mechanical design you can make it so it will be working very simpler or very better way you can do it so i'm still figuring out which is the best way with my friends and, and with the community yeah i think also that you have to consider i mean if you want really to wear it so yeah. really to understand how you will attach it and also think about some of other components that maybe are not so uh, difficult to find as for example the linear 
there are like linear or solenoid motors that are very small that yeah. you can also attach and instead to make the whole gear because it's a, like a, a little bit big it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's in the, big. In the like, arm. So imagine that you are wearing this yeah. and like it would be very funny, but, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but of, I mean, of course, I, we, let's say in all projects, we start in that way. So we start with a very, let's say crazy idea. So I don't know, imagine that you are, bringing a compression here in order <laughs> to move something. That's uh, such a thing that in Fab Lab can happen, but let's say that step by step, uh, and also as we recommended that maybe you can have, uh, if you have contact, for example, with a physiotherapist or with some uh, other people that it's uh, also, I don't know, for example, a friend that is not, not only your, uh, coming from the fab lab because you think like ah because i am coming from the fab lab i can wear it but maybe if uh, someone uh, that it's also not a part of the community can accept and wear it and improve it you know so like that such aspects are also very important for for this device also yeah. understanding also that the uh, yeah if you are outside for example if it is raining such a things that um so enclosure the electronics and yeah yeah, yeah so like that in part of uh, aspects also for for your device yeah like it's, but, it's just a prototype like i should build it uh, further more like i should improve my designs a little bit and uh, there are many ideas to do that's it yeah but definitely was what what we talked in the past uh, what important is is also the documentation and you try keep track and and share with the yeah. community that that would yeah. be great yeah thank so, you i'll do that yeah <laughs> it's nice to share my ideas with you <laughs> thanks yeah. for sharing yeah. so maybe uh from the other people who is here uh, um can i show my project yes can i share my screen uh inger yeah of course let me Give me a small second, I will just make you co-host. Yeah, I think that you can now share your screen. Can you see it? Um, no, really. Do I have to um, do something? Uh, you have to go under. In, in ah, yeah, this. yeah, I can see it. Okay. I want yeah. you to show this. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so basically what it is, uh, my husband, who is uh, here, he had a stroke, and um, one of the things he lost is sense of time. And what is very important for people with his kind of brain damage is um, keep track of time so that they don't get too tired. He has to work for, say, 25 minutes and then stop working and have a rest for five minutes. So there's a system for it, it's called, no, uh, it's called Pomodoro, it's very well known. Uh, but for that, you have to uh, set an alarm all the time and he will forget. And then I tried to program his uh, iPhone uh, to make those alarms every 25, five minutes, etc. And he left the phone at my desk, so I got the alarm and he just continued to work wherever he was. So we came up with the idea to make something that was on his arm. It's kind of jewelry and there's uh, uh, two buzzers in it and a clock. So it will be a very discreet uh, buzzing signal for him. Two different kinds of buzzing songs basically. One to remind him that he has to stop and another signal that we can to start working again. Uh, I did that in the context of um, make health prototyping at Raag in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. um, my problem at the end was that it became too uh, complicated for me with the basic uh, FAP Academy knowledge uh, to program it uh, uh, properly. And it stopped. I couldn't make the next step to, to make some a next prototype that 
uh, electronically work perfectly. Uh, and I think that that's the case with a lot of projects that I saw around me in um, make help prototyping, that it stops at a certain point instead of uh, to be continued until it is something that you could put on the site like uh, the Tom site or something like that. So that's what I wanted to tell about it. And also there's a, 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 this group of uh, people, very often when we talk about uh, people with disabilities, we are always thinking about a lot of physical disabilities, including blindness and deafness, but there's a much larger group that have mental disabilities due to stroke or due to, um, uh, uh, what is it, uh, when you get older, what's the English word for it? Dementia, things like that. And they will not come to the FAPLOP and ask for solutions. They will not find solutions. But very often they don't know even what the problem is. So it cannot be those groups themselves that are going to look on, on uh, a site and look for solutions. We have to find something else to approach that group. And on a personal note, I'm looking, I'm in, uh, I'm 70 plus uh, in the Netherlands considered a high risk COVID group. So I'm in isolation already for more than four months now and not going outside. I would like to have a mask that is legally allowed in the Netherlands, but will protect me. So the masks that are uh, allowed now, they only are aimed at not spreading virus, but I want a mask uh, that protects me from a virus infection. And I cannot find masks like that, that are for wearing in the street. It's most of the time the mask that function like that, they are for use in hospitals. And I don't see myself with uh, uh, a snorkel mask, for instance, doing shopping at a, at a grocery store. So where to find the solution for that? That's it. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh... Yeah, what, what you were saying uh, about the fact that the project sometimes stops and it's hard to bring them on, it's, it's totally true. Uh, the amount of time needed and the, the, the number of things that could happen in the way that becomes an obstacle are actually things to consider. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, is actually one of the partners in the Calibos project, so uh, I, I haven't seen a project though. I saw some of the Make Health pro projects, but, but not yours. Some very nice. I, um, I think that uh, I, I like um, we know each other from the, from, uh, the past projects, I think. Um, I, I, what, um, anyways, what I wanted to say is that uh, I think that the step of uh, prototype to uh, a, a product is, uh, and especially for for healthcare, is a, a big um, topic. So, and and of course, I think that the steps in a fab lab are, let's say, in a way limited. But I think what you say, uh, and also uh, because it happens also to us that, for example, in a, in accessatons or with the activities with students, that um, how to bring these uh, prototypes um, forward so that, that we could also develop uh, with uh, the company or, for example, let's say, um, yeah, uh, with... Um, uh, deep uh, research uh, the some products uh, I think that that maybe is something that that it uh, makes sense also to if you are not capable to do by yourself but that, that is also a question if you want to do it or maybe that you would like that uh, someone is taking the the 
let's say the the steps that you did until now and that maybe from the community ask for help to continue the project but then i should know how to ask for help and that's not very clear to me uh, i i don't want to have it it doesn't have to be a commercial product but it should be more rigidized so that other people in potlucks could make it if somebody asked for it, something like that. Yeah, I think that uh, that um, uh, I we had also this week a conversation about the kind of project because, as you said, that you don't want that it's a commercial product, but somehow that, yeah, of course, like an open source product um, that uh, everyone can profit but I think that, that that's the the idea of the understanding until which step we can do by ourselves and uh, especially for for people who has the the disability that maybe other uh, parents also can profit from it uh, it's almost uh, uh, yeah um, but we that how 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 to understand and also develop also this part, for example, in your case of electronics, in a very reliable way, because there there is, there is already some technologies that we could also use, but they are not available in the lab. That's the the thing. Uh, but uh, I think that that therefore, uh, yeah. So, so, so such a things are something that we could also uh, research, for example, in a forum, and understand this uh, the medical equipment or understand how we could ask also in between in, for example, with the wiki factory that has also very um, broader community also with uh, uh, people that is not only makers, how we could, for example, or how you could uh, connect with each other and develop the project uh, forward. But I think that there are some people who is also putting some comments Kumar, do you want to answer? Yeah, I'll yeah. just wait for it. So, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, uh, and hello Beth, like I remember you from the like the last meeting we had. So uh, like uh, just I just wanted to share like few points like in in this regard like uh, so we are talking about like making things open at the end like so uh, okay uh, just to introduce myself so I, I have a moon I have a design company and like um, I am also an educator so I work basically in this design manufacturing and and education sort of so, and we had um, not much experience in uh, like uh, developing medical events, but yes, like we ha we de we developed one product, so that was called a therapy a therapeutic uh, breathing like uh, trainer sort of a thing. So so it's basically a device. Uh, I don't have the. F I tried to like find a fear because we did this project like three years back. Uh, this like uh, we were approached by a doctor named Donny uh, Kotoki. So she was working uh, from uh, in the. Uh, she was working and she was already in, uh, in the uh, department and like she wanted to build her own uh, device for a thesis basically. So they have to like, so doctors, I don't like doctors need to like build up some sort of thesis also if they want to uh, like, so they, she, 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 it was her initial idea, but we supported her with the uh, facility and like the design to, so, so, so she, gave, she gave us the standards and the parameters what are required in that particular device and our team we worked into design, like designing that particular idea into a real product. So like, so, so she was basically like a like client, but anyway, she uh, did the whole research of like what, how the device requires to be built. So now having a person from the medical community itself and giving us feedback and like, uh, like asking us uh, like they need this particular parameter. And we had some good testing because like uh, once we build up, build up, build up the device, we could ask her to like go check like she can like, uh, instantly go to her own uh, maybe patients and like she would have she have the ability to like calibrate and also like do her own analysis so like so having people from the medical community like who can post up and help us is always a plus point like to like if, when you're talking about like fab care and like we're talking about health so like having people who want to and since the device was designed by her, we could not open source it. So, so that is something like we, we could not document like 
the working and like share this because it's it uh, it was her like uh, like IP thing. But anyways, like uh, the idea again being going uh, like devices can be made cheaper, like equipments, medical equipments, as Inger was also saying, like devices can be made cheaper and in her own way. But again, like when we talk about like taking these devices and taking it to the masses, like selling it to the people and like people will be using it for their uh, like own health, uh, like analysis, mm -hmm. approval will be required. Like you can't like have like so many people like putting out products which are not at all reliable or like they don't have any accuracy. So that again is a very like, uh, that will be also a very not a good thing to have. So, uh, so yes, but again, like having designs which can be like replicated in our own communities and like we have a mechanism where uh, people who actually give approval so if you can have a contact with them or like some sort of a collaboration so that they can we can directly approach them like okay this is the product that you develop can you do something so that i don't because i have started fresh i don't have that much amount of money to get this thing tested just like so so medical companies they have a huge fund to like get their things tested when it comes to a person who is making at his own home or a team who are trying to develop something open like for them to again like get uh like yeah grant maybe one of the way where they actually get the fund to get the thing tested or they get the thing tested itself like without having to think much about like how will this thing because again if somebody develop the thing uh and use it it can be for the person like for my personal benefit i can do i can develop something i can use it for my own but if i feel like this can like help like more than one people there can be more people who can benefit it provided they there is a mechanism of approval in a very uh, easier way and a very cost effective way so so that will like greatly benefit like the whole uh, idea of having like open designs for like this kind of medical devices uh, even i saw like uh, the ventilator open ventilator designs got like lot of like it got a lot of trouble like or like it was uh, it had a lot of trouble like to actually get some approval in like lot of countries so again like so like, to even have, have a design Maybe I will use it for my personal use, but then again, like when like organizations, government who will be actually purchasing, uh, like procuring such kind of equipment and placing it in their hospitals, they we, that will be required some sort of a, uh, some sort of a approval. So yes, uh, so the, so like as a manifesto, as a, in terms of manifesto, like we can think about like devices which are designed but are not uh, or have not been approved yet. So we can have put up such as disclaimer like this is a this is a device which we thought like will work for a person but then again when you have a disclaimer as the part of the process it like yeah, we like we don't share liability in terms of like how the per other person have designed it so that has to be gone tested in their own community i have designed something i shared it in the open document like i say it will work like 100 percent like uh, but the thing is that my device is working perfectly because of like my configuration and my calibration might not be the same in the other way so like so the so a disclaimer should be a very like a very uh, transparent thing like like you need to get it tested in your own before you think that you can sell it and like uh, the people who are developing it should like understand that all the pros like when we think of devices other than medical i think it's always okay like you don't need much of approval also but if when it comes to like a medical equipment you have you you have to like see it through like how 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 do you get this thing approved or like it can can the fab lab network or or different networks who are already working in this sector can can uh, influence or like uh, can like uh, build up a mechanism where that thing can be like uh, approved in a more faster way because uh, when it comes to a pandemic like situation if this thing if this kind of uh, situation uh, occurs again in the future if we have if somebody have developed a device in that particular time period and if, and that thing doesn't get approved in a very uh, in that a very in a very speculative amount of time i think we lost the time basically of like getting the getting the device to actual some some real purpose use other other than personal we can always build a device and use it for use it for our own use because that that is our own like responsibility but like when you think about again like taking taking the thing and like putting it to the masses uh, that thing that that part i think we have to like figure out like how do we how do we work in that that particular layer of like transition to the personal to the public domain of medical equipment but That's i true. i yeah i think it that's a very dis uh, good discussion because uh, in the main let's say people who is working in the area 
we have uh, projects, let's say that as, as eager, that are doing for the personal, let's say, interest, you know, so like to understand and also in the many cases also, for example, how I start also to do a device was because it was any device, device for it. And, and it happens because, yeah, as we know that each, uh, let's say, illness affect, affect people in another way. And that's the, let's say, the reason also why uh, many of these activities works in that way that we don't have that that let's say or the patient or the the relatives start to work on it uh, so let's say that this um, device let's say certification go not actually so let's say massive way but yeah so it's it's just interesting i think that it, in any case uh, it's very important what, what you said and, and also how we could certificate and and go for for this uh, yeah, way. Uh, but and now that maybe you start to, to talk, could you tell us a little bit about uh, also in the projects that you are working? So we, we know that you have now like uh, your company, that's also very, very good. Uh, okay, yes, so I like, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so go ahead, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, like, uh, so the idea of uh, like, we didn't have like at that particular time, like, we had a 3D printer or any laser cutting machine like to actually develop the device. That's the whole point. Uh, what we had was like the uh, network of like uh, services provider. So like we designed the we designed the PCB and we send out the design to a PCB designer and like they send out the PCB design for us. We had a local like uh, like uh, for, for laser cutting. So our device was uh, made of uh, acrylic uh, acrylic fitting. So what we did was uh, what we did was uh, we we ha we did we have a network of uh, like small service providers like they do their own advertising like cutting on everything. We send out the design to them and we get it because like invest again investing like 10 lakh rupees into just buying a laser cutter was not like it was we didn't have that much of fund or grant but we know like the like uh, for the time being we can develop in, in a stages way so in the first stage like we just took out orders we had this network we did uh, so we met her in an exhibition where we were actually like so the interesting part of how we got connected to her was through an exhibition so we had an exhibition and called like uh indian institute of engineers so this is basically the assam chapter had a pro program like for education and like we are putting out like different exhibits and like like there were school kids who were coming out and even like uh, engineers or like uh, or even like people uh, general public were there to visit us and like they saw like they were they got in contact with us and like we we had one day like she came up and like she wanted to build this thing so yeah so so we travel a lot actually like uh, in, in when it comes to education in mostly in our region so i belong to assam uh, from india so so, uh, so again like we have a very diverse background in terms of demography and the problems are very like unique we find it unique because what happens is like i, I have a very like very good experience like very close experience with this kind of thing so what happens like uh, here uh, the people who are giving alternate alternate medical support uh, in terms of uh, acupuncture or those kind of health facility what they do is like they procure the uh, equipments from china at a very lower cost so it will cost like maybe like for them maybe 300 400 rupees when they buy it from china and when their devices are sold sold in india so that goes to around like 30000 like it's mind blowing. <laughs> Why? Like it, so it's like ten times, hundred times. Like they are like in terms of like that. They're just trading it. The basic idea is that they are bringing chunks of devices from China and like inflating the price in such a way like only limited people can have access to those devices or like those services. So that is where the open designs will I think come into play. Where if you get certification, why like we like why do we need to spend so much money like if that thing can be designed in our own local community at a very lower cost so so that was the idea like why i was more interested in that year uh, but again like i have my i have my own personal business also like uh, i have i have my like my father my grandmom 
so like i have some like health issues so like i i very well understand like uh, what what is it to have like people who are sick with you and like you can't help them in some way and like you just think about like what you can do like to like just make their lives better a little better so so if you think about like uh, designing of hospitals if you think of hospitals so a very common a very common problem is the beds the icu bed like that that cost around like 5 to 10 lakhs of rupees a very good bed like which which you can like change position or like you can upgrade so i, I oh, think like i think it, so if you have an organization like, like if if i open source i mean design community what focusing on focusing on like designing this kind of a thing we can like design it a very low cost i don't feel like that that much amount of required is required for just a uh, like bed because what happens is like it's it's more of a like a lobby you have this high like uh, you have this few companies working in a country like who actually like controls the controls the uh, uh, infrastructure and like supply of the equipments and like you don't actually get to uh, like get to design or like sell this kind of thing at a very lower cost so i think like if you can uh, tweak that thing into like building more like uh, so you can have like very slow, very smaller places who don't who can't afford that much uh, like uh, that much amount of grant to actually develop a hospital into having a very uh, so so i was like thinking of like what will be a design of an open sort of a hospital will look like like with that is made up of all the equipments very designed very locally and it has standards that is certified by its own country but then again like is the whole country like you don't have to like invest that much amount of money that is required to just start one hospital so maybe with that same amount of money uh, we can have maybe 10 hospitals provided we have the fund and we have those designs which are certified uh, so th that can like i think uh, like uh, have a very good reaction in sort of way that we can make more accessible i i guess like fabcare has should have a manifesto of making health care more accessible like making is one expected but even like health how how can you make the overall like question of like health nowadays like healthcare is like super uh super costly like if you have to have a like good insurance something like how do we like how do we bring like those kind of points and like put it in our structure Uh, just, uh, like uh, as Inger told, like how do I find people who can help me solve those problem, uh, like that uh, problem. So we we have like yesterday also and and Rico we are having this discussion of having like a platform where we put up problems also and like we can people who are actually like trying to solve a problem we can have a direct like connection between them. So we can have a layer of it's it's a portion where we have this all these different ideas of what are the different sectors. within within healthcare that somebody can work on and like uh, people can just pick up a topic and like they can start working on those things because like healthcare is not one dimensional so it is lot of dimension and just we need to find more people working in different dimension rather than just like few people just working on one dimension because like i think people with, with different uh, understanding dif their people with different expertise will be able to correlate with different dimension and just not, not just one dimension of the problem <laughs> yeah okay thank you so much uh, i think that uh, yeah enrico do you want to say something no 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 it's an interesting topic it's not an easy thing so uh, my suggestion would be for this round we are just collecting things so for instance uh what i got from uh inga if i pronounce your name correctly or inga inga maybe Uh, it's coming kumar it, it, it's that it's not easy to uh bring the projects uh on a, on a longer run and and we have to figure out a way to match the people with the communities so what i get from uh, kumar is that it would be nice to work also on uh, uh equipment and not just on solutions so it's nice to hear a bit from everybody and and try to get insights uh at least for this first run um so i i'd really like to hear from uh, ahmed beth uh, uh jeffrey derek and i'm glad to see you here uh camilla yeah thanks uh thanks enrico it's my pleasure to meet you all um i'm ahmed hagazi from project nitrous 
from Egypt, if you remember last year. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will give you like uh, a brief uh, introduction about the uh, project Micros and I will talk more about our uh, uh, our cases, I think you might be interested mainly uh, work with people with disabilities, um, creating, creating an assistive tools for them using a digital fabrication. Uh, our team is a small team. It's, uh, it doesn't exceed like uh, 10 persons. They mostly separate between community engagement and technical person. Where uh, while we're setting an uh, empathy meeting, like the technical person always capture the technical aspects of uh, the challenge and the community engagement more focus on the human interaction and how he feels because uh, the common uh, challenge we face with the people with disabilities, they don't aware about the, their needs because they live uh, the whole life with this kind of disability and they, they don't have the idea of understanding that there is a tool that could uh, help them. Um, uh, during COVID, uh, we shifted to face shield and uh, we succeeded to deliver like uh, 35,000 uh, face shield to hospitals with the help of molding for sure, it's not 3D printing. Uh, and uh, then uh, currently we are coming back. Um, the kind of disabilities we are working with is mainly mobility and visually impairment. Uh, we are trying a little bit with the uh, amputation and uh, in the next phase we are uh, um, we are focusing on uh, how to include the cognitive disability. Um, we have uh, part of our team is uh, responsible for this. Uh, however, uh, disabilities like autism is really challenging because it needs uh, an expert, but we will enter uh, with the kind of disability like dyslexia or learning disorder, uh, how we can help them to achieve uh, the learning output. Uh, so let me start with uh, my personal uh, work uh, in Nitros. So may I share screen? Give me a second. I will just yeah, sure. make you a co-host. Adhyan, I think there is an option like where you can just allow the participants to share screen. There should be an option. Then they can ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I, you can already share your screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, this is um, a project for uh, a five year old kid. It's called Karim. Uh, Karim, uh, due to a medical, uh, medical fall during his birth, he uh, uh, causes him a paralysis, a kind of um, uh, a cerebral palsy, sorry, uh, which lead to his legs. So uh, he loved uh, riding uh, bicycles. So his mom uh, came to us. Uh, she said, uh, I always tie his leg with the paddle. Uh, so we manufactured this. Uh, these two plates is from TPU and this is uh, a Velcro. We, we, are, we are always trying in Project Nitrous to make uh, the product as simple as possible uh, to be easily uh, used by uh, the BWD because if we exceed the complexity, it, end up, it ends up uh, not using it and we face this a lot. Um, let me show you a second one. Uh, this uh, this product is for uh, a case. It's called he is called Islam. Uh, Islam uh, suffer from uh, uh, disorders in disorder in his uh, hand joints. He can't wash his hand. He can't collect water and wash his hand. Uh, so we are keep thinking how we can collect water, and then. We, we, we reverse our thinking, how we get the water to his face. So this is uh, uh, an add-on to the faucet. It has an internal ribs. It's from TPU as well, uh, a flexible filament. It uh, fixed in, uh, in the faucet and it turns uh, the flow without falling out. Uh, let me show you another one. Uh, this is... Uh, the common multi-tool, but let me switch screen to uh, our, 
our 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 this is our amazing community um, and this these two our two two of the greatest success stories first one is the multi tool uh, I showed you that does the, sc the screen of the website appears or uh, or not okay great uh, the multi tool uh, or the pen holder itself it's for um, a person with disability he is called Mahmoud uh, he didn't enter college because he lost he lose, he lost the, the ability uh, uh, to write because of uh, an accident uh, he came to us and uh, he asked for a tool to help him uh, to write and the most interesting thing after eight years he uh, sent us his graduation certificate. And this was uh, some, something remarkable. And you can read uh, the full story uh, uh, on, uh, on the website. He is from Luxor in Egypt. Uh, and the second one is an educational kit. But uh, the most interest, interesting thing, it's uh, a startup for one of our PWDs. He's called Ahmad Sabri. Uh, Ahmad Sabri, he's a visually impaired. He, uh, uh, we supported him to launch his startup. It's called Al Siraj, and currently he is uh, producing an educational videos. How to uh, he is explaining how how he can use uh, uh, the educational. So, for example, this is uh, the season. It's uh, for sure it's in Arabic. I think that we cannot hear you. Uh, so he is uh, he is explaining to the people. Uh, uh, what uh, sort of how you can uh, deal with so uh, the other visually impaired people uh, can uh, hear and understand what, what what they are carrying. Sorry. Uh, so um, this is uh, one of uh, one of the startups we are supporting, and uh, currently we are focusing on increasing. Uh, the startups uh, made by the PWDs and uh, the segments of the disabilities we are including in uh, in Nitrous, uh, and yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so I would like to hear from you more, like uh, anything you would like to ask. I I would really appreciate to um, share if someone. Ha um, start some something similar uh, uh, because uh, because uh, like one thing um, I, I keep always to share among us like uh, the technical person don't focus on technology important because most of the time he says it looks fancy and he doesn't use it because maybe maybe it's look um, um, makes him feel uh, strange from from the others maybe it's too complicated he doesn't feel uh, uh, doesn't 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 feel uh, suitable for him uh, and one of the interesting story I would like actually to share uh, project Nitrous uh, came from enable initiative uh, idea in, uh, uh, in uh, at the beginning and uh, before 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 I joined they, they told me they work with the case uh, uh, an amputation kid from uh, from, from uh, he, he got his amputation from here like from, from here from here exactly um, and people keep development, keep developing, keep developing, like putting motors and so many stuff and making the, the prosthetic hands too fancy. And at the end of the day, uh, the kid throw it away and get uh, his dad make him like a bottle and put a pen, a pen inside it to, to start writing. He left this all and start use, reuse the bottle. So um, the most the most important thing for working with disabilities is the human aspect, and that's why uh, I mentioned in the beginning our team is separated between the community engagement, which is focus on first thing is this case we can support it because some cases like 
many cases in amputation, it need me medical intervention because if you uh, proceed and support it, it may, may cause more harm, like um, more load on the muscles. Uh, so uh, we, we don't, it's not, it's not our part. Uh, and some, um, and, and, and the second, and his second role uh, of the community engagement um, is to always ensure that this is what he needs and to, to dig deeper on his needs and create awareness on uh, that will actually help you and expand another dimension in your daily life. Because most of, uh, of the people with disabilities here in Egypt uh, actually um, getting, in, uh, get, getting close to themselves and doesn't interact with the community. Uh, Ahmed, how are you connected with um, the people you design for? Uh, first thing is the, through social media and the interesting thing is um, uh, these people actually uh, are very close to each other. They have uh, a strong community between each other because they are they are feel connected. So one tell the other uh, these people uh, uh, actually help me and they give me this. Uh, why not you, you give a try? And we keep inviting them to events. Uh, the main aim of the events is to make them uh, feel included. And this is very important to play on their psychological aspect, like. Uh, our relation, more about relationship. Mm -hmm. I like um, the simplicity of some of your designs. Um, as an occupational therapist for years, um, I, I uh, identify with that and just zeroing in on the need of the individual. Um, that was great. Thanks a lot. Uh, Beth, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Beth Lloyd, and um, I'm actually retired. I worked as an occupational therapist in schools for a long time. Um, in the last five years, um, I helped open up a fab lab in our high school. And so I had um, the opportunity to work with digital fabrication tools. It really, I mean, o being an OT is really a maker. And this was just another sort of very easy jump. Um, too. Um, and we've always been problem solvers. So um, it was nice to work in this environment for the last couple of years that I worked. Um, I, I don't really have anything to share. I, I have one project a couple of students um, developed for a fellow student who had the use of one arm. He was a um, music lover. He wanted to play Beatles songs on his guitar. So they tried to help him um, figure that out. And I do have a, a, like a 10 minute video. If you want to look at that, I can share my screen. But um, it was just students designing for other students with disabilities. And that was really great. Um, I don't know. Oh yeah, I can share it. Sure. Can that up. Um, so again, this is our old Instagram account, but um, he, they developed a mechanism so, um, by pushing down with your foot, you could sort of strum the, the strings. But I, I have um, the same question um, as, and I forgot the woman's name, Inez, or um, we, we didn't get it totally right. And it would have been nice to have some expertise to take, help us to take it on from there. Um, we found ourselves in that space where it was cool, it sort of worked, but yeah, yeah, we needed some more support. Uh, I don't know um, if, um, if I can support, but feel free to, uh, we, can, we can get in contact if, uh, I don't know, um, uh, maybe I can share you our best practice in, uh, if, if we had a similar case, and actually one of our cases, which is Islam, uh, that I created a faucet, uh, actually, he is designing for other people as well. So, and this oh, is uh, really interesting. And uh, yeah, and uh, Ahmad Sabri, who uh, who um, who has the startup of educational kit, he is actually criticizing our projects. Uh, like he destroy our dreams uh, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but he's actually a very critical uh, point of view uh, on uh, on the products because the interesting thing that he is visually impaired, so he is um, always always sense uh, has has a good uh, um, tangible uh, tangible sense like. He yep. feel he feel he feel the product, so he catch another perspective, uh, which is not in mind. Yeah, um, so it's great. I mean, this has um, planted seeds in my mind a little bit. It's nice to hear other projects and um, what people are working on and um, where to go if you know we need something to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I can I add something I to? Uh... Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. Okay, one of the things that really helped us and maybe others, as soon as it is available, try to uh, to grab a jewelry designer. Yeah. Jewelry designer. So my thing really looked great because of her. She was uh -huh. a jewelry designer, and then combined with a uh, student industrial design, as far as look and feel, we came pretty close to what we wanted to achieve. It was just the electronics that we, we didn't get it to work because there were some issues with uh, how, to, how to have electronics in this part while it should be movable like that. Yeah. So it had to be uh, a special kind of connections that were rigidized enough to withstand this. Uh, so it was technical issues that we couldn't solve. Yeah, great point. I, I just want to also add something very shortly. And also especially, I don't know if it is for the same issue, but we have also a project in the, in the university. So we, we are working uh, in the faculty of bionic of the University of Applied Science Rheinwald. So we had a, um, let's say a project in which we wanted to the, for people who taught, uh, played ukulele and, for example, they don't have one hand and how they could play the ukulele uh, just with only one hand. So as, as you see maybe here, because unfortunately I, I see that the project page is not working, but the students designed this pedal, um, let's say this pedal um, work that it also uh, works with uh, with this part that you put in the ukulele so that you could uh, let's say play the, the the chords and tune the 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 ukulele part and and it's very interesting because that that was a first step that they did uh, through the access atom so like let's say that of course it take like longer than what we can but maybe longer of it and after they they could do also other tests uh, instead of taking this uh, part that is the pedals that they uh, built everything in the in the fab lab uh, they took the the part of the input as the brain computer interface that they could just wear let's say the the let's say the sensors for the brain computer interface and play the the ukulele parts the 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 motors here uh, so let's say that 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 that's are the such steps that you can do step by step um when you have like a kind of a project and you want to extend it uh, maybe that that would be also an idea that it could be that if you have some projects that you think that we could work also in cooperation with the university uh, i think that students will be also uh very uh, happy also to uh, to put in practical let's say for example for the biomechanics students that they could make in a real scenarios and understand uh, cases and maybe help also others that that could be a, an idea um yeah so i think that yeah sorry thank you that that looked very interesting yeah thank you so much for sharing your thoughts i would like also to invite because i i think that uh, camila has also to maybe to go and after uh, before she goes maybe if he, she can also share a little bit about the experience in brazil i am very very happy that the group is very international <laughs> so Hola. That, Hola. 
I'm from Chile, actually. Ah, yeah, from Chile. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a video I would like to share with you, but I have very bad international in internet connection. So if you can play it, I will put yeah. it in the chat. Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm actually just a maker. This is my, free, my first project, but um, I'm so glad to know you um, have a feedback from you. Let me just take this video you can hear. Good morning, I'm Camila Naranjo from Monks, and this is my presentation of Backkeeper. In Chile, in 2016, musculoskeletal problems were the 50% of occupational disease. In 2018, it were 43%. These diseases are related to bad postures when working in front of a PC. Office work might seem like a low risk activity. However, the sedentarism associated can cause heart disease, intestinal problems, diabetes, and cancer. And in the long term, there are chronic pain associated with bad posture. And then comes the pandemic. Around the world, the mobility to office down at 39% because the work was done at home. Only in America, 88% of companies have encouraged or required their employees to work from home in response to the coronavirus pandemic. So sedentary working life for long periods of time in front of the PC is a problem for workers around the world, and it's a big issue to deal with. Our proposal is Backkeeper, a wearable device to support posture correction. It's designed to help users with posture correction, inactivity detection, and wants to be discreet and easy to use. It's complemented by an app with posture tracker and statistics, active pause model, and notifications to the cell phone. Backkeeper is made with a microcontroller, a gyroscope, an accelerometer sensor, and a buzzer for alarms. It's designed to be used in the neck. First, you have to calibrate it along five seconds. The device will alarm while you are in a slouching position. After this first functional prototype, I'm working on a smaller and lighter prototype for a more discreet use and comfort. So Backkeeper is a wearable device plus a guided exercise module. Wants to be a complete system to improve your postural health. In Amazon, you can find other devices for postural correction. Their value is $50 the cheaper to $330 the expensive. Backkeeper has similar functionalities, but its cost of production is only $12 for the moment. So, working from the PC, looks like a low risk activity, but in long term might cause health problems. Visitation is worse due to the pandemic. Backkeeper is a device that wants to avoid the problem from two approaches, the bad posture problems and the sedentary problems associated with office work. The proposal is still in development, but it's being designed to be a low cost but high functionality device. Uh, thank you, Camila, for sharing. I think that that's uh, also in the meaning. In the meaning, while there are also many, many ideas as uh, very important, also issues as as being in the. It, Uh, 
I just I just have also the other videos in this in the loop, <laughs> and also the the issue with my microphone. Sorry. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I. I, I uh, would you like to add something, Camila? No, no. Uh, is this my first project? Um, I'm uh, still working, and with the pandemic, it's just an impulse to keep uh, working this. So, I'm just glad to be here. Well, thank you. Uh, super cool project. So, um, I think Jeffrey is the last one. If you want to share something, and, and then we can wrap up the session. Um, I, I'd like to collect from you what you think are the needs uh, that we can help you uh, help you with, that the group could help you with. So whatever you think that this group could be useful for. Um, so I'm uh, starting a fab lab in Malawi. It, it, it hasn't uh, uh, quite been fully funded, um, but it's been in the planning stage for a while. I, I live in Malawi. I'm an American. Um, I came four and a half years ago because there was a need um, in Malawi, which is still there, to um, be able to get uh, timely uh, test results back to health centers. They're, they're only, in, the, the funding for this project actually came from US, USAID. Um, and uh, the, the issue was, is, was for uh, HIV viral load. There are only 10 labs in the country that have a, a molecular device for doing the test, but there are over 700 health centers. Um, and so the way both blood samples and test results travel essentially were by motorcycle courier. So it, the difficulty is that it could often take as much as six weeks to get uh, a test result from a blood sample. And that's for, for HIV viral load issues is, is way too long. Um, So I designed a, a dev for, I had to design two devices for this for this project, and and they were both one one for the diagnostic device uh, in in the lab to be be able to pull results out out of the device, and the other was for the results delivery in the in the health center. the 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 challenge The challenge in the health center health centers is that. A large percentage of, of health centers that do ART, um, which is basically almost all of them, since because it's a it's a very large problem here, is that um, um, there's no electricity in many of them, um, and there's also a, a challenge uh, for connectivity. Uh, Malawi actually has pretty good connectivity. Um, for for a country that's you know uh, very low on the on this you know economic scale, um, it's a relatively small country, but it, it does have a lot of um, uh, geography uh, uh, issues. There's some there are mountains um, all, all over the country. Um, many of them are are fairly small, but but some are are quite quite large. Um, so in in the end. Um, the other the other challenge for the for the design was that it be low cost, and and low low cost solar powered, secure because there's a lot of theft issues, and um, in of, of anything that that's that's uh, you know has any perceived value, and and then the other challenge is you put a device in a in a health center that that. Um, you know, people can see. Oh, it's it's connected to a solar panel. Oh, here's the device that it's connected to. Um, well, how how can we charge ourselves? You know, how can we break into this thing to to uh, to uh, you know get some power out of it? In fact, when I when I originally came here and and 
and went around to health centers to, to understand the challenges of other, of other projects. Um, one of the uh, most outstanding uh, uh, common problem was, were projects that had essentially um, been destroyed by people trying to stick, to, you know, charge their device or or pull power from it from a device because because it wasn't it wasn't provided. So I I'll I'll just uh, show you what what ended up being being uh, designed for this for this project. I don't know how easy it is to see given given my um, given my proximity. There were there were quite a few design issues here. Um, Having to do with with ergonomics, with 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 um, with security, um, this this design I don't know if you can easily see it is uh, is meant to either be a, be used from a table or attached to a wall. So there were there were design issues there, and it and it had to be secure you know securable. Um, it also had to be accessible, so that um, what we what we include what we designed into it was a was a combination lock here, so that um, it could be closed, but then open to to um, to replace, uh, you know, to be able to to work on it, and also to be able to attach it. So it was it was secured from the inside. Um, this this is a this is this particular prototype. Um, if I open it up, you can see there's there's a well, hard to, hard to hold and. And get in the right position for a for a view. Again, my, my lighting is bad. Um, so this this device is is both um, powered by a, a Raspberry Pi um, and and an Arduino. Um, it's it it uses both. Um, we needed to uh, be able to uh, control the, uh, uh, the the power um, power usage. So. Essentially, when you plugged it into the sun, the only thing that was running was a was an Arduino, which uh, woke up on intervals, um, woke up the the Raspberry Pi and the and the uh, cell modem to go out to see if there was was data uh, for that health center, and then ultimately pulled it down. If there was data, it would turn on a light. It's right on the on the front panel, um, and then. Um, uh, the you know the the clinician when they came into the health center in the morning would see a, a light on if there was data and they could then you know turn it on with a with a soft switch which would then bring up the whole system including a display touch screen um, and um, again one of the one of the drivers here so this this device was 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 piloted um, in um, in three districts in the in the country and also in seventeen uh, health centers. And and as soon as it was as soon as it was put uh, it put in these cell centers, the, the 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 staff who normally you know get the uh, you know get the results on, on paper ha have to go into a logbook, find the you know find the patient where where the um, uh, you know and find the entry where the blood sample was taken, and then put the you know. Put the results in when when they get it. Uh, you know, ma many many challenges. Here. Issue just having you know just having uh, being able to make this thing. Uh, the, the box you saw it's a it's a steel box. It was made in a modern uh, fabrication facility in the U.S. at a, at a very high cost. And so you know this is this is one of the reasons. When I got here, I found out that there were there, there were literally no um, you know no fabrication facilities at all, um, except uh, and, and I not not that there weren't any at all, but but there weren't any that could make something in a in a precision way, uh, in a in a precise way to to um, to be able to you know affect a design that was that was uh, you know. Tightly built and and um, could achieve all of the all of the um, design requirements. Um, it and and so you know if if there was a fully functional uh, fab lab here that had uh, a plasma cutter that could cut steel, um, 
uh, things like that, it would, it, it would make it possible to be able to produce devices like this at a, at, at a low cost in the country. Um, of, of course, the argument is that, you know, Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and, and, and electronics are, you know, are all displays all have to be, all have to be imported. Um, but, but at least, um, you know, that the, the, the hev uh, well, and of course the, the, the battery, um, the idea, the design idea here was that the, that, that everything could be, could be run on DC. Um, and, uh, you know, design goal of, of, of a five volt DC at, at that. Um, so, so this was just, this, this is just one of the projects that, that, um, um, I, I've been working on that I'm trying at the moment to, to simplify the device. It currently uses a LIFEPO, uh, a 12 volt battery. Um, the idea being that, uh, to reduce it to, to run on a single cell LIFEPO, um, and, uh, because it would, it would then sim again, simplify the device. You wouldn't need a, a charge controller. The, the charging could all be, could all be, uh, controlled simply through an Arduino and a, and a, and a voltage detection. So there, there, you know, there, there are lots of, uh, lots of, uh, uh, design considerations in something like this. Um, and, you know, I'm in Malawi at the moment, I, I'm, I'm working essentially as a solo maker. Although there is a there is an, an organization here called the Global Health Institute, it was it was started by a um, uh, a Canadian American who who um, who started the first uh, um, e health uh, organization, um, and they they're doing some interesting work that I that I hope to um, uh, you know, get out to, to more people. Um, it's, uh, for example, one of the, one of the materials that they use for, um, C CNC work, um, you know, to have a durable material, um, is, 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 a, is a challenge. There's a company that makes, uh, there is a, a local company that makes, uh, a, 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 a plastic that's used for, you know, drain pipes and things. And what, what, what they're doing is they're taking, um, it's, it was a really clever um, uh, fab hack. They take this, this, um, this drain pipe, cut it in sections, slice the sections in half. So you have, you, have, uh, you know, half, half curves, put it into a, into a homemade oven, flatten it. And now you've got sheet, now you've got plastic sheet material. Um, that's that's essentially locally produced. Then you can put that on your on your CNC machine and uh, and cut it into uh, precision into precision materials. And, it, and in fact, that's a that's an option for for this device also. Um, uh, some other things that I'm that I'm working on. I was, I'm interested in um, uh, where did she go? She's she's left now. Um, the uh, um, oh no, there there you are, Cam Camila. You're you're back. You're back. Uh, a straightening uh, uh, thing. Um, I have a, a almost 90 year old mother who who can still get about on a on a rollator. It's you know a rollator is a is a rolling walker, and and there there are um, challenges with rolling walkers, especially um, with seniors. And and so I've I've uh, come up with a design that I'm that I'm prototyping now. It's not far enough to show, but it's essentially a queuing. Uh, rollator that 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 um, it, it doesn't it doesn't take over control like a like a electric wheelchair but it but it, it cues it cues about proximity and locking you know these things have locking lockable handles things like this and so um, you know these are the these in general are the are the kinds of things that that I've been I've been working on in, in, at, at various points um, you know the a, a roll uh, a, a queuing rollator isn't exactly uh, a high need in Malawi. Much more important uh, for you know health results delivery because this 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 design that I did is a is essentially a, a low cost EMR that's that's hardened um, will work anywhere and th this is the kind of this is the kind of infrastructure that's 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 so lacking um, when it you know when it, when it takes six weeks for for a test result um, and. Uh, and, and most of it, you know, most of the issues here come down to, to um, you know, 
relatively small amounts of money for, le for less than a, a less than a million dollars, way less than a million dollars, the whole country could have could have connected health care. And it's and it's a shame. Um, so so I'll, I'll, I'll just stop there. I just wanted to, you know, show people what I've what the kinds of things that I've that I've been working on and doing. Um, you know, my, ba my background is electrical engineering and, and, and software development. And I, I've, I've been working with embedded Im embedded uh, systems, embedded Linux for for 20 years. Um, I, I started on that journey working on a, a, a device for um, for visual acuity. Um, and um, and it was a you know twenty years ago to to do it with a you know the, the, there were there were no uh, Raspberry Pis then it was uh, it was via Epia um, uh, devices that were you know one hundred and fifty millimeter square motherboards and and getting getting the cost down for a, a on a compact flash you know before as before SD before micro SD. So compact flash were were just um, uh, were expensive. So you know I had to try to you know build a product on a on a, a 64 uh, megabyte device, and um, you know we 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 think about you know we don't even think about those numbers anymore. Those those they're too small, right? You can't you can't buy an SD card that's that's smaller than what four gig now. Um, so I've I've I, I've I've seen you know I've been a a, a maker in, in 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 these respects for a long time and have have, have seen the history. Um, of, of technology, so I, I and I'm still working at it. And I, I really like what you're doing um, uh, with 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 uh, uh, Fab Fabcare, and and I I would love to uh, participate more more actively. It, it's it's and learn about the the challenges because I, I'm I'm trying to put together uh, you know this 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 uh, Fab Lab, and 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 there's so many so many questions to to uh to doing it um but i'm, I'm hoping that you, that you guys can give give support and and if you know if any of your organizations have any equipment that that, that are you know that have, have fallen out of use or you've gotten the bigger better uh, versions of uh please please consider uh, uh make making a donation this this lab is 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 intended to be a um uh a public uh a public makerspace so, um, uh, and, and I, I have a foundation here, it's called Hoodsmart. Um, we, don't, we don't really have a good uh, uh, website yet, um, but, but we're working on it. So, so thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, it's an amazing story. Um, shall I, um, uh, I want to say something to Jeffrey, please. Um, uh, Jeffrey, uh, about about the last part about uh, the donation part, I think uh, uh, I sent you a talk about uh, the first makerspace in Kenya. Um, I think it's really inspirational. But about the donation part, I think uh, many of uh, engineering students like they're using their sensors and the actuators for uh, a work project for a certain section, and it keeps they don't use. Uh, they don't use it again. Like uh, this is here, for example, in Egypt, and I think this is for a similar place. Um, I don't know uh, how we can manage manage something like this, but um, like for me, I'm ready. For example, to uh, if I have electronics, I'm ready to donate for those who need it. So I'm thinking about how we can manage. Uh, uh, so this sort of donation, maybe globally, maybe locally, per each country, um, and send send it to those who need it. Um, maybe in the projects, maybe in experimentation, uh, rather than staying uh, uh, in the person's home uh, useless. I think that that's a very very important point. Also, as as you said, I mean. There are many ways, let's say, there is also crowdfunding campaigns, also maybe for, for uh, like, let's say, collect uh, money, uh, that, that would be also a, a, an idea. Uh, but maybe as, as, as people is not ready to do this, but immediately, or let's say for several terms, let's say in a short term, as for example, the community from, from COVID, or for example, here in Germany, we are also helping people to send, or let's say the community is helping 
uh, people send a mask uh, or a face shields that maybe if you have a kind of documentation that for example other labs can produce some for example enclosures or parts that maybe you need and maybe we can send uh, that that could be let's say a middle term uh, solution but maybe it could be interesting to understand a process in which what could be in a short or medium and long term and, and definitely keep in touch in which we could um, help each other and maybe uh, put this in a forum uh, not only for 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 us as as, as fab care is interesting also for machine that makes is also a very interesting topic uh, I think that what you mentioned uh, uh, about uh, connecting healthcare and as, as you said that if it is not a lab, how we could start to do something. I think that it's a, a very interesting um, case. So precious girl case, I, I, we will be more than happy to, to help you. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I totally agree with, with, uh, with you guys. And uh, I think that if, if this is a common need, to maybe have tools that are not that available. We could speak with the Fab Foundation and have, uh, you know, in the next newsletter, organize uh, for a donation from people that has a machine that they don't use anymore. Um, so collect needs on one side and, and people available to give it away on the other. So that's a good suggestion. Uh, I, th I think also, you know, the other thing that, you know, you may think that a, a machine that you have is, you know, out of, out of date and won't be useful. Um, you know, the, the, the structure of this fab lab is, is going to be, um, you know, both for education and for, and for uh, pr just as much for uh, education as for production. Um, because you know they're they're engineering programs in the country, but but they they're they're not they don't produce graduates who who you know are thinking you know thinking about design thinking about you know how to how to put their knowledge into practice, and and you know the 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 makerspace fab lab as as school is 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 a is an approach that I'm, I'm I feel very strongly about because you know that's what's that's what's you know one of the one of the big things that's missing here. You can you can teach um, electrical engineering, you can teach software, but if 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 uh, students don't have practical uh, practical problems that are relevant to the to 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 their need, um, they're, they're not going to be their their education isn't going to be have you know, small things. I have a large collection of raspberry pies here. So it, you know, at least I have sort of, you know, and, and Arduinos. And so, you know, these are start, these are the beginnings of tools, but, but, but we need to have more production to, to be able to, uh, you know, create a, the, many of the things that I see, um, you know, other, the more, more uh, you know, uh, mature labs working on. Um, and, and to do it on a basis where where uh, people can really see what's what's possible, um, you know, in in person. It's great to have, you know, to see something on a on a on a website, but it's another thing to actually, you know, be there and see this thing being made and put it together. Um, it's a you know, there, there's that magic and beauty that wow, we're, we can actually can actually make these things. So I I think I think. Uh, I think that's important. I think that we, we couldn't have a, be, a best um, cl cl closing uh, testimony and have your your thoughts. I think that that, that uh, has a, a, a very, um, a lot of challenges that I think that we could address, but I, yeah and how we could start that it's a good question um so i invite you also as as we said that like uh, we have also the the um fab care uh, organ uh, organization in the wiki factory in maybe we can also put uh, as if you have questions uh, that we have a forum and a project also uh, site in which you can also publish it 
I mean, first suggestion uh, also for Jeffrey is that maybe start to document as, as we talk and talk through the whole time. Uh, maybe that, that sounds like also especially for education is like the, the first step that we had to, to start. And I think that it's uh, uh, very nice to see also like the machine that you said, look, that's exactly what I am doing. So, uh, but of course, in order to help uh, and to connect also with the other labs, that that is uh, one of the one of the main steps, and um, and therefore, so we can uh, go towards. Uh, yeah. So maybe Enrico, do you want to say something? Can I add something? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, somebody was talking about a template for uh, documentation. I don't remember who it was. Could we get it? Both me and uh, Nada. Where can we find it? Um, from uh, well, I can share the link. Give me just a second. And the other thing is not a question, but a remark that I suggested already in another session. Would it be possible that Richard? Poplops in richer countries twin up with poplops in uh, more need of, of uh, supplies and things like that, so that there can be a direct connection between two poplops. How would you organize it if you think it's a good idea? Sorry, uh, Igor, I didn't hear your question. Mm -hmm. You were saying okay. the connection between? So you have a system of cities that are twinned and that are connected, but couldn't we do the same for FOPLOPs? So that uh, a richer FOPLOP kind of adopts a poor FOPLOP and organize actions uh, for, for uh, financial or other support in their home countries and send it to the other FOPLOP. You understand what I mean? I think, yeah. I, I don't know if Enrico wants to answer, but also that depends. I mean, let's say that there are many figures of fab lab. There are commercial labs. There are labs that are embedded in the universities. Um, so, and especially, let's say that there are labs, as for example, where Enrico is involved with now in Kerabos, an European project in which for them is, let's say, easier to cooperate one lab with each other. Uh, but uh, yeah, mainly it's, uh, let's say that each, each region or each lab has their own, uh, let's say, um, ways of work. Definitely we have the, a philosophy in which uh, should be like in that way that it's open for yeah. everyone, for citizens. And what, what I suggest is that um, also you try, if you have in, an interest in a special lab, just go and try to, 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 to talk with them, write also that you are coming from, for example, from Amsterdam, that you have this, uh, let's say, project or background. And I think that, uh, yeah, we are, let's say the people is very happy also to understand connections between labs and so on. And also, especially, as I said, if it is a, a project that I can also work in it or, or people as, for example, in, in Idrus that they are also working, for example, in, in that, that area, uh, I think that is more than welcome. I, I, I can try to answer to Jeffrey's question, uh, just to clarify, because maybe it has been confusing. Um, so I'm, I'm managing Open Dot, it's at the Fab Lab. So some of the materials uh, we shared comes from the labs that I manage, some from, some from uh, Adriana's one, and, and we hope in the future from others. And Open Dot has been uh, uh, one of the partner in this European project. So there are these uh, grants uh, granted by the European Commission that allows you to uh, organize, you know, pretty big projects. And um, one of these projects was Carable. So they supported us in developing the platform and the documentation system. And, and we think that 
And back back when we started the project, we, we thought, how should we call this? And, and we defined the name of Kerobos as an object that takes care of someone. Um, so we decided to keep that definition even within fab care because uh, we are not just doing assistive technologies, we are not just doing uh, equipment for hospitals, we're not just doing things for disabilities, but we want to make things that helps. So we, we decided to keep the name Carable for the object. Uh, I hope that's not confusing, <laughs> otherwise we might, <laughs> we might think about changing it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the point is that there are different platforms where to document things. Uh, Wikifactor is a platform that you can use to document your project, of course. Uh, you can use uh, Carable, you can use uh, GitHub, you can use uh, Thingiverse. So everybody has his own preferred platform. What's important is to document it. And then we, we will collect them into collections to make them available for everybody. So that, that was the idea. Okay, guys. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let, let's really try to stay in contact through the uh, FabCare group. Because yeah, and it's tell me. Yeah, and I just wanted to uh, like put up a few points. Like uh, I'll just uh, just put it quickly. So like, uh, do you think like uh, like uh, because Wiki Factory uh, Factory doesn't ha I think have uh, can can you put up some sort of a visual like navigation sort of a thing other than those blocks where like suppose suppose you have a like or maybe or like even a, a mural board or something where we have this like a board with of just problems and like where we just see like we uh, people can just post up things as they pop up and like from there onwards we like take it to the next level sort of a thing it's, it's like the, those dimensions that we're talking about like there are so many aspects of fab care like or like in terms of carables that we need to uh, because if you go to the forum forums that will be like uh, it will be maybe a bit difficult to just like browsing like what are the things currently going on and more of a visual sort of a thing where we can just go and check uh, what are the problems are being raised as of now? Which people are working on which problem? Are are there any current brainstorming going on in a particular project, which is a particular open project maybe, and like we can maybe like contribute to those particular projects. So suppose like, suppose uh, uh, Inger was talking about like her design and like suppose you think that she wants to make it, make it open design and like, uh, just like we are brainstorming as of now, we just brainstorm like few people maybe who will be interested into developing that project can contribute to the project and it's, it's more like like raising up raising a flag okay the uh, event is going on or being something even will have be happening around this particular product and maybe you can jump in like people who are interested in contributing like yeah the, apart from the forum like app like just the initial point of understanding then maybe the forum can be a follow-up So yeah, um, we have at the moment uh, some limitations in the kind of uh, infrastructure we can create. So uh, on, on the FabCare group, you can create stories, projects, and forum, and that's it. <laughs> so <coughs> it is good because it allows uh, discussions on one side, uh, documentation of projects on the other. Uh, so maybe we don't have the right tool to uh, fit perfectly what, what, the, what the need is. Uh, but we can try different approach. So if you think that forum is not the best one or, or not the best one at the beginning, we can try to structure it in a different ways. Uh, so we are open to suggestions, uh, but keep in mind that there are some limitations in the kind of tools we can use, mm. at, at least at the moment. Yes, as we said that we are at the very beginning. Also, so that's an open group. We are in the in the beginning of, of working in the group, and therefore, um, so we have the the, the organization in Wikifactory, but uh, uh, we have also the murals that we we will maybe we can also try. That's not a, a, a promise, let's say, but we will just try maybe. Um, to think about if if it is uh, if we can embed it because for example Wikifactory has uh, several parts or embedded or 
or maybe that, that we can also open something for a, a next brainstorming. But let's say that, that, that the, the murals that we have are main for these uh, sessions. So um, yeah, it's very, it, it, it could be also a, a, a next future if, if we have the possibility. We can organize the, you know, share documents on the Google Drive, of course. Yeah. So every kind of tools that we think uh, could help, let, let's talk about it. Oh, so, um, hey. Enrico? Hey, hi. hi. Hi, just one comment. I think um, I've been on transit. I was trying to... I hoped that I could sit down somewhere and then I could do a presentation perhaps, but I think I joined a bit late for that now that I can see the time is running out. It's good to see you. It's good to see Adriana again. Um, nice to listen to all the projects that guys have been working on. My name is Derek. I'm from Kenya, Nairobi, from Fab Lab Nairobi. I've seen a comment there from Jeffrey, by the way, very inspiring project you're doing there. I appreciate that. About Dr. Kamau um, at Gearbox. I want to know whether there's something specific I could help with. If I joined on time, I would have talked about the projects we are doing at, uh, at Fab Lab Nairobi and uh, University of Nairobi Makerspace. But due to time, maybe you could just tell me if there's anything I could help um, for you to be able to reach Dr. Kamau from Gearbox. Um, I, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe you, you can suggest it. I, it's, it um, I was introduced, I was introduced uh, via email uh, the, um, uh, from, um, oh God, from uh, Fab Foundation. Um, um, oh God, I for, now I've forgotten his name. Uh, who's the, you know, the global uh, uh, coordinator. Um, he was, he was at, at the conference last, last week. Um, and um, I've reached out to him several times via email. I've, I've got no response. I, I know people in Malawi who know him um, and, and perhaps he's just quite busy, but, but you may, perhaps you could, um, we, could we could chat offline um, uh, sometime soon because I, I really would like to um, learn about the challenges of, of you know, how you got started and, and how you're structuring your, your fab lab because you know there 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 are many ways to do it, and I I have I, I have my own ideas, but maybe there maybe the mo the models that I'm that I'm looking at are are you know won't work here. Um, so yes, I, I would really appreciate a, a, a connection with you. Perhaps we can we can share uh, emails through the you know through this uh, chat quickly, so I can get in touch. Wonderful, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for offering. Yeah, that was great. It's, it's part of the beauty of the network. <laughs> so, th thanks, Derek, to, for for stepping in. Uh, can you add your email in the chat? Do you mind? Yes, sure. I'm just typing it right now. I, I am I just wondering if you if you saw the email because I, I have uh, still some emails from last meeting if you got my information <laughs> so um, I think that uh, because we have everything right uh, in paper um, I guess that some of, of those who are not working but I am very happy that we can keep in touch and that's the idea that me that we can work together, that we can uh, support each other. And uh, as um, uh, Inger says, if we have also a way to uh, work in projects together or do also activities together, that's, uh, that's the idea. Therefore, we are in a community. And, and also, I see also very big advantages also to have uh, this uh, online session. Uh, in which enable us to to meet all together. Uh, yeah, uh, if there is still something that we forgot to say, is this now is the time. <laughs> Otherwise, I think that I need the Camila's device <laughs> for my <laughs> back. I guess. <laughs> I was thinking the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha ha. 
is there is there a I'm I'm not a I'm not a uh, a great uh, Zoom uh, user. Um, uh, is there a way to save um, and to save the chat? Can you save the can 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 you save the chat? Is it possible? Yeah, yeah, you can you can save it. So if you if you open up the window, you can just see like these three dots beside like the right side of file. You can see. If you have opened up the mm. if you have opened up the chat box, like you will see like. There is a there are three dots beside the file. Well, yeah. Um, so we, we otherwise I don't know if we could also share because of the um, data uh, rights and so on. But yeah, um, you can uh, save the chat or just copy and, and paste if you like. Uh, but in the three three dots. Uh, close to the to the data there is also this chat uh, function of of saving uh, otherwise just i suggest just copy and paste in a word and, and that's it or or maybe what we can do is also uh, to put the important uh, links let's say that in a in a in a story in the wiki factory so that that maybe you have access afterwards Oh, there, there are the three dots. Wow. Okay. Fine. <laughs> finally, I thought I thought it wasn't on. I thought it wasn't part of the uh, the Linux version of of Zoom, um, but it's there. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for for staying until a long time, and yeah, I hope you enjoy also summer and uh, yeah, and so wherever you are, I hope that we will meet again. Um, latest next year, but I hope soon. Yeah, sure. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye. You, everybody. Bye. Thanks for organizing these things. Terrific. Well, thanks. You are Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank the English initiative. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Enrico, can you can you put your uh, direct contact in that chat? Absolutely. You will uh, you will be posting updates on the. It, it's that there's a typo. I saw it now. Sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, you, but you will be posting up updates uh, on the uh, through mail, or like you'll be using the FabEx uh, network, or like will you be doing it on the forum of of Wikifactory, like like maybe the next updates. So I, I don't think FabEx uh, will be a tool that we will we'll use in the future. Uh, we'll copy and paste all the information we got during this week uh, in Wikifactory to keep it as a, um, as a repository. And then probably the best way to communicate uh, will be through email and, uh, and eventually we can set up, but again, I don't know if you agree on this, uh, a, a WhatsApp chat or a Telegram group. So for, for quick uh, communication that could be effective.